In this lecture, we begin our discussion on Gauss's law. So in the previous lecture, we defined what electric flux is. We said electric flux is the number of electric field lines that enter or exit a certain surface. So let's suppose we have a three-dimensional region of space and that region is outlined by the following green section. So this is our enclosed volume or region and it has a certain surface area. Now we define electric flux as the number of electric field lines shown by the blue arrows that pass through this region of surface. Now notice that all the field lines that enter our surface exit the surface at some other point. So we have four entering and four exiting. And that's because by definition electric field lines must begin on a charge, on a positive charge, and must end on the negative charge. And because we don't have a charge inside this particular region, all of those field lines that will enter will exit at some other point and that means in such a case the net electric flux through this particular region will be zero that means all the lines that enter will exit at some other end so in such a case our electric flux is defined to be zero so this equation that we showed or derived in the previous lecture is equal to zero we have no net flux. Now let's suppose we take an electric charge and we place that electric charge into a certain enclosed volume with a certain surface area as shown in the following region. So in this case we have the following region outlined by the green line. Now notice we have a positive charge inside our enclosed region and that means our electric field lines will begin at the charge and will extend outward in all possible directions as shown by the blue lines. And notice now we only have lines coming out of our region and that means our flux will be positive. If on the other hand this was a negative charge all the field lines would be going into this region our flux would be negative. So now there will be an electric flux such that our electric flux will be a non-zero value. So this integral will be non-zero and that leads directly to the following statement. There will be a non-zero electric flux only if some electric field lines start or end inside our enclosed region as shown in the following diagram. Now this leads directly into the following important statement. There will only be an electric flux if the enclosed section includes a net charge. So let's suppose we have the following region. Inside this region we have our charge which is distributed unevenly. We have a positive 3q charge on this side and we have a negative q charge on this side. Now the net charge that is enclosed in this region of space is negative Q plus positive 3Q and that gives us a net charge of positive 2Q. So because we have a net charge that means we will have a non-zero electric flux and this leads us directly into Gauss's law which states the following. Our electric flux is equal to the closed integral of E multiplied by dA and this is equal to the the total charge that is enclosed in our chosen region divided by epsilon naught which is our permittivity of free space. It's a constant. So this law is known as Gauss's law and this is a relationship between electric charges and electric fields. So once again our Q enclosed is the net charge that is found inside our chosen volume or region and epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. It's simply a constant. Now, let's look at the following important note. 
It does not matter where or how the charge Q enclosed is distributed inside our chosen region as long as the charge is found inside the region and not outside. So let's suppose we are looking at the following region of space. So we should only consider charges 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and we should not consider charges 1, 2, and 3, because charges 1, 2, and 3 are not found inside our enclosed region. So when calculating Q enclosed, we only look at charges 4, through 9 and not 1, 2, and 3. So once again, charges 1, 2, and 3 will not be included since they are found outside of our chosen region. However, charges 4 through 9 will be included. Now, of course, we can redefine our chosen region to include the charges 1, 2, and 3. So that basically means if we choose a region that includes all these charges, that new region will include these charges. So once again, what exactly does Gauss's law tell us? Well, Gauss's law is a statement about the relationship between electric charge and electric field lines. And it is a more general statement than Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law essentially describes the relationship between electric fields and stationary point electric charges. On the other hand, Gauss's law is a more general statement that describes charges that have different shapes and different sizes.